Rub up your engines! Sad bit of news as far as I'm concerned. Toyota is going to be making more pickup trucks in Mexico and not in the United States. They're moving all of the Tacoma production, the mid-sized pickup, to Mexico. They're not making any in the United States anymore. In 2021, they say that they're going to be making 100,000 vehicles a year at the Mexican plant that they weren't making before. They still weren't making them in the United States, but they said 2021 it's going to be all shifted down to Mexico. Now, to me, that's a sad move. He can imagine Trump isn't going to like that one. When the Toyota executives were asked, well, what do you think about this, you know, you know, moving jobs down to Mexico? And they said, quote, we don't make business decisions based on politics. We're a company that thinks long term. Hey, let's have the truth. You just want to make them cheaper. They're cheaper to make in Mexico. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And that's why they're moving them there. The business decision is that they can make them cheaper. They're not charging any less. They're expensive trucks. They're well-made trucks. But they're expensive trucks. And just to my own personal experience. Of working on cars for 52 years, I see the cars that come out of Mexico, the quality is lower. Period. I don't care. I just have seen that. Maybe Toyota will prove me wrong. And five years from now, people will say, oh, my pickup that was made in Mexico was just as good as the one that I bought that was made in the United States or made in Japan. But I'm not holding my breath on that one. You got something quality? Why would you change it? Of course, it's just to make them cheaper and have more profit. That's kind of obvious. That's a business decision. But people buy Toyota because they're quality. They're going to be in for a rude awakening if their quality goes down. And you pay people less to make stuff, generally, the quality does go down. That's just the way the world works. If all the people at the top make all the money and the workers don't, what kind of jobs are the workers going to do? And I've seen that from things made in Mexico. Dodge made in those horrible neons down there which they don't make anymore. They made the PT Cruisers that were really poorly made cars in Mexico. If I was running a business and I had people buying my pickup trucks and they liked them, I would leave them where they are. I wouldn't just move them to another country because they were somewhat cheaper to build down there. But that's what they're doing and I personally think that's a bad move. I'm at the other end. I have to fix the things and tell my customers what's reliable and what isn't. I don't want them to buy unreliable cars. I care about my customers. I care about all you people watching me. I can help millions of people. I can't fix your cards with my hands. I don't have that many hands and time to do it. But I can give you advice that will help you out. In this case, I think... Moving the production of those Tacomas to Mexico, which they say 95% of them are going to be sold in the United States, I think that's a bad move. Well, here's one for you Honda folks. The 2020 Civic Type R has a little price increase. It's going to be $695 more. Now, that means that they start at $37,950. If you would have told me decades ago that people were going to say it's a bargain to get a Honda Civic for almost $38,000, well, in terms of today, yes, it is for what you get. They call them hot hatches. They're hot hatchback. They're fast. They're like miniature race cars. There's no arguing that. There's dreaming cars. My customers that have them absolutely love them. Some of them went a few states over to try to find one that they could even buy because most of the stuff is sold pretty fast. There is a decent used market because some people get them and they are fast little cars, but... On the other hand, they're also little cars, as some people just don't like the riding because they think they're too stiff, little rough riding, but that's because that's what they are. It's got a 13% bigger opening and a bigger radiator core, and they claim that the temperature can be 18 degrees cooler if you take it on the racetrack or drive it at the full speed. You know, the faster you go, the more you strain an engine, the more air you need to come in to cool it, the bigger radiator you need. I remember when I had a 2013 Shelby GT500, that thing didn't even have a grill in the front. It just had a big hole because they decided that we need as much air as possible to cool everything if you're going 200 miles an hour, which that thing could do. They didn't even have a grill there because that blocked the airflow. So they just had a giant gaping hole like a shark's mouth that's sucking the air into the engine. Now, there's a reason for these things and that's why they got a big bigger grill and a bigger radiator on these. And bushings have been upgraded, made them stiffer, they've messed with the suspension. Like I say, if you want a little bitty hatch racing car, it certainly is the one to get. So you might think $38,000 for a Honda, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money, but it's a lot of car if that's what you want. Don't think you're going to buy that and get a luxurious ride. It's not a luxurious ride. It's a racing type ride. They really handle well. They corner like demons. They're not going to ride like a big light. 
Lexus? Of course not. And they're relatively bare boned inside and doesn't have all the electronic stuff that a lot of cars have, but that's not what this thing is for. This thing is for really zipping around in. And even though they're $695 more, <laughs> you're still getting a lot of bang for your buck if you don't mind spending that kind of money. Blunt's phone says, I'm looking to buy a 2013 Highlander SC with 80,000 miles. I look at the TSBs and data from the National Highway Traffic and Safety Association. There's 170 complaints on this model. That's normal? Did I look for anything in particular? Okay. Well, that can be relatively normal because of our society these days. People complain about everything. Some people might even complain about the color of the vehicle, you know? Those are really well-made vehicles. I got customers with Highlanders that have 500,000 miles and they're still got original engines and trannies on them. They're really well-built vehicles. You're going to get complaints of all kinds of nitpicky things here and there. People just love to complain, you know? I mean, I give out free advice to people and then people still even complain about it if I say, well, you know, you can use this data system to fix your car. The particular one is all data. And they'll say, but Scotty, it's not free. And I'm like, if you don't want to spend $29 a year for information to save you thousands fixing your car, but don't even complain about that. So <laughs> people will complain about everything. Now, if you're going to buy a used one, drive it, make sure it runs good and shifts good, but still don't trust anybody. Take it to a qualified mechanic like me who's going to tell you the truth. When I hook up my scan tools, they can't hide any of that data. I'll get pages and pages of data that I look at and analyze. I spend about an hour analyzing the used car for somebody, and I will know. If anything's hidden, I'm going to find it. No ifs, ands, or buts on that. As long as the mechanic says it's okay, they can be great vehicles. Larry's lost it. 821 says I got a 2008 Kia Optima V6, and my left front and right rear brakes Lock up. Help. <laughs> okay, yeah, you would with that. It'd be fish tailing all over the place. You wouldn't want that. Of course, if you had any work done on a vehicle, you might have air in the system, and that makes those ABS systems go ballistic. So if you have had work done, either go back or if you don't trust them, go somebody else. Have them bleed air out of the system. You could have air in the system if somebody worked on the system. Now, let's say nobody's worked on the system, and this just came out of the blue. Well, I fixed them before, and it was always a bad ABS module. The ABS module is basically the giant brains of the analog brake system. And when they go haywire, they're supposed to control the wheels from not locking up. And so if they are locking up now, those are in different circuits, left front and the right rear. You know, the front ones are one circuit, the back ones are another. So if you got one up front and one up back and they're both locking up, all four of them are controlled by the ABS module. So unfortunately, you're going to have to replace last. Last one I fixed the Kia like that exactly what did the same exact thing and I had to replace the brake module which is a very expensive part but that fixed it and that really is the only thing that could possibly do that unless your car's been in a wreck and things got bent and stuff and the lines were pinching but if you didn't you're going to need a new module. King Edward the 427 says I got a 2012 Acura MDX V6. My check engine light is on and it's got the codes for running too lean P0171 and P0172 Four. But it runs okay. What can I do? It's saying that your fuel system is too lean. It can run lean for many, many reasons. You didn't give the odometer reading, but it is eight years old. When they run lean, but they seem to run okay. You always check for vacuum leaks. You hear it hissing or something, but generally you get a vacuum leak. It's not going to idle very well because they have to run perfect at idle. And if it's got a vacuum leak, it's going to run poorly at idle, but you said it runs okay. From my experience with those, try this. I got a whole video on make your car run better with a little spray cleaner. Clean the MAF sensor. On those, the MAF sensors can get dirty. Take out the MAF sensor, it bolts off. You spray it with MAF sensor cleaner. Only use MAF sensor cleaner. Special cleaner. My whole video shows you how to do the whole thing. It's not that complex. Let it air dry for half an hour, put it in, and you might find that'll fix it entirely. Because since it's saying both banks are lean, what affects both banks is the mass airflow sensor. Because it feeds the whole engine. So if it's making the car run lean, it's going to make the whole engine run lean. If it was only one side, bank one and not bank two, it could be the MAF sensor because that affects them both. So clean the MAF sensor. A lot of times that's going to fix your problem. Now you, you might actually need one, but let me tell you, you said it's running okay. And when they're dirty, they can run good enough that you won't notice much difference. If they're bad, you're going to notice a difference. It'll really accelerate poorly, idle poorly. So clean the MAF sensor first. You might find that's a simple fix. And you can thank Scotty for making you only buy a can of MAF sensor cleaner. And yes, they're not cheap, but I mean, what's nine bucks? <laughs>
Remember to ring that bell!